Edward J. Emerson, and it is March of 1935. So we are getting our production ready for our 1937 models. We already did our compact sedan, which was done last year in May. And normally we do it in May, but with the purchase of Porsche, we ended up having a little bit of a delay. We wanted to kind of see how the prototype performed. And with the new transmission that we developed for it, it performed very well. Now we're pretty much working with the standard models and getting a better understanding of what direction we want to take the company in. We've been working on some of the names of some of our vehicles and giving our customers more. And we've cut some of our prices dramatically. We were selling our vehicles at a premium, but now that our cash flow is pretty steady and our customer base is pretty steady, we have slashed our prices pretty much in half for our Emerson Motors division. By that being our volume seller, we're able to sell enough of those. We have enough factories globally that we are able to give our customers the absolute best quality of a vehicle that we can give them at a, an extremely affordable price. So we're designing now our coupe, our solar coupe. And even though Emerson Motors is being sold at, a, at an amazing price, still have some vehicles that are pretty high price for the time. But I'm being pretty high price for the time. Wanted to get more of our vehicles in the hands of customers. And one of the interesting things that we noticed was, was that with our vehicles selling at a premium and by us having so many marquees and with our marquees being overlapped, that the competition was selling at a very cheap price. They really didn't have any motivation to provide the customers with a high quality product. So how did we come up with that synopsis? For instance, our Detroit market and look through just what all of our competition, they're selling for anywhere from $1,500. Some are selling for like 900, 800, 700. Most was about $3,000 or so, which is pretty comparable. And what we were noticing is, is that what they're selling isn't that great. So it seemed like they were relying on Edward J. Emerson to provide a excellent model. And then it seemed like they were just scaling down their versions and selling more of their versions than we were selling. So what we ended up doing is we ended up cutting our prices back in 1934 to see where we cut our prices that we started an uptrend. And even though we have some dips in, as far as sales, you can see where everyone else is pretty much at. We just did a model change in um, just last month, which is the end of our fiscal year. So presented our new 1935 models, February of 1935, which is just last month. And as you can see, when we did that, many of the other auto manufacturers started really trending really high because now we had two different versions or two different model years, exceptionally good price and an exceptional quality base and an exceptional dependability. You can see just dramatically what started happening to some of the other companies. So we have Studebaker who um, dropped off a little bit, um, Triumph, a couple of other vehicle companies dropped off a little bit. Now, as far as our vehicle class share, 
we are pretty much the leader in compact sedans, compact SUVs, but as you can tell that we're only a small percentage of our market. And so we're not selling an exorbitant amount of vehicles and we're not global. Even though we have factories all around the world, we aren't selling our vehicles all around the world. Our primary market is United States, basically North America, Australia, and Central Europe area. We have a few branches, one branch in Africa, and we're also selling in Japan. So we're not we're not global sales, we're global manufacturing. Currently the second largest automobile manufacturer in the world as far as last month's market share. We're at 7.5. The largest is Stanley at 7.8. And then it's Edward J. Emerson and then Triumph is at 7.1. Locomobile Company Americana is at 7%. Vauxhall is at 5.7. Century is at 5.4. Cord is at 5.4. Leland is at 5.2. Opal is at 5%. Studebaker is at 5%. Detroit Enterprise is at 4.9%. Detroit Automobile Company is at 4.8%. Emerson Square is at 4.6%. Peugeot is at 3.8%. Classic Motors is at 3.5%. Lancia 3.1%. Buick is at 2.6, 901 is at 2.4, BMW Motorsports is at 1.8, Duesenberg is at 1.4, and General Motors is at 1.3. Now, that's just for the larger companies. Now, there are still a lot of smaller companies that are smaller than 1.3, and they're in this other category, so they make up 4.9% of the market share.